Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. Welcome to a new Let's Play actually. It's gonna be um, Hands of Fate 2. It's, I've been meaning to play this game for a while now. Um, as of like the 6th of September there's been a new patch out which I'm really excited about. It basically reforges the uh, the combat in this game. Um, so what is this game? It's a, it's a choose your own adventure uh, style of game with uh, with some deck buildings going on and some uh, Batman Arkham style combat and it's um, well you might have noticed it's uh, you might know even I should say that this is not uh, a game <laughs> I normally play so it's it's not turn based it's not strategy like the Anno games it's um, yeah it's uh, it's it's more action oriented really so um, I haven't so yeah why why this game why not why not number one Let's see. This, uh, that might be the next question. Well, Hand of, Hand of Fate One is uh, is is inferior to this one in in many ways. Uh, like the, there's more gamut options. You have companions in this game as opposed to one which are there. Um, a little bit more unclear game mechanics in one. I, I I'd argue, which are here in uh, in two. So that's just uh, just a few things off the top of my head. Also, the uh, the it's less it's less uh, repetitive. Because in the first one, um, it's basically you get a map, you run to the stairs, you get to the next level, run to the stairs, etc., etc. That's basically what you do in all the challenges there, all these uh, in, in Hand of Fate One. So you have there you have twelve uh, cards to beat, basically the king of like the the, the, the jack, queen, and king of respectively dust, uh, bones. S uh, what's the other one? Plague and skills. I think those are he those are not here anymore anyway. But and those twelve games, those twelve different levels are basically all the same. In this game, there's more uh, far, uh, more variety in the in the missions too. So that's why I really want to play this game. Uh, but yeah, as I said, there is some uh, new combat mechanics, and uh, I realize that a lot of the the well the let's plays that are are on online at the moment don't seem to do a new start like a fresh start from this point on so i'm i'm really excited to uh, to to play this game with the uh, new uh, mechanics have i ever finished this game mm, no 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 not not really <laughs> i think i've got to um i think i've done like 20 20 of the 22 maps i think the missions so i've done most of it not quite all of them so what are we going to do well how is this format gonna work? It's it's very simple. We're gonna play uh, one mission per video. I think that that seems fair. Might also try uh, try my luck at some editing if I run into a mission where I will fail a lot. Uh, one of these things is strength because I tend to unlock cards. I prefer to unlock cards over actually winning the game. <laughs> so <laughs> that's something. Um, Goal is to get everything on gold beaten, so that's uh, what we're going at, and maybe do this uh, adventure, uh, new adventure thing, and maybe an endless thing if if uh, I feel like it. Or unlock all the cards and all the shards. We'll see what happens. For now, I think, um, yeah, w let's just start with the first mission. If it's uh, new, then uh, I hope you enjoy. If it's uh, not a new game to you, and if uh, you actually like these these kinds of games too, then I. Uh, recommend playing the new patch yourself because 1.6 adds a lot of well adds a new layer to the relatively simple combat in this game which is um, nice which is exactly the thing it needs anyway let's a uh, new game Your memories are fading even now, gone to form the soul of the game we play. These pieces are new, as are the stakes. Life, death, and vengeance. We must ride, for time is short, and you have much to learn. Make your first choice, and let us set these wheels in motion once more. Well, I'm Mill, so we'll be going with Mill, of course. Um, I'll try to not talk over him. <laughs> he tends to throw in lines, 
maybe if I wait too long, it will do it right now. <laughs> but I'll try to um, elaborate my choices if there is any and uh, use my knowledge of the game I already have to uh, m easy, more easily unlock uh, tokens. Uh, regards to tokens, by the way, there's new shards added. Those are mostly, well, as far as I know, they're um, cosmic changes. So we'll put that uh, on the uh, low priority. The, f the priority of adding stuff to our deck is going to be, uh, it has a token. That's going to be the first thing, which we can unlock. That's also, uh, there's some tokens you can't unlock by simply playing and using the item, for example. There's some uh, things where you have to play a hard mode of a previously played mission, for example. Um, those we will, of course, not include, but otherwise we're going to take tokens first, then new cards, and then we'll take cards that benefit, um, well, that are beneficial to the mission we're playing. That's at least the, the plan here. Uh, I am right here, and we have things to do. I know, I know. Calm down, calm down. So that's, <laughs> that's the way we're going to do it. And lastly, if there's uh, room left, we'll use shard cards. It's, uh, yeah. I'm not uh, prioritizing those. I'm going to prioritize unlocking stuff. Anyway, uh, we will be, we'll be mill. These cards represent your history and our game. We know where they end, for you are here. Therefore, these cards must guide you to my side. Let us see what the journey holds. The fool steps into nothingness, because they know no better. In the same way, you must step into the void. You are a blank slate, and together we will write your history. Ah, right. You've stumbled many miles through this forest in search of the th thieves who robbed you. Though exhausted and hungry, you are determined to reclaim your father's amulet. So, um, yeah, this uh, th this only has a this card only the full the card. We're mission the missing mission we're doing now only has a gold token, so super relatively easy. As you can see in the to the right, you can see I'm not using a mouse. I'm using a gamepad, by the way. So to the right, you see little uh, plate. On top of that, there will be uh, tokens. Apparently, there's already one because the I've activated the DLC content. I think those are actual. Those are extra. Um, what you call them? Cosmetic updates. Anyway, let's continue. You finally catch sight of the thieves hacking at a large tree and arguing amongst themselves. Uh, let's move closer to eavesdrop. Every element of the game has been improved, even those that seem at first glance familiar. Yeah. Do so not worry. You will soon understand the nuances. Right. So this is one of the gambits. You can follow these cards, of course. So. Uh, those the, the movements you saw are actually actu uh, actual, and this card moved on top and was one of the uh, swords, so this should uh, pass. Creeping forward, you overhear their leader spouting orders. It's simple, he says. The idiots walk down the road, you push over the tree and jump out. They'll be too scared to put up a fight and we'll get rich. Why don't we just jump out and stab him? One retorts. Another hooded figure chimes in. Yeah, corpses don't put up a fight either. Frustration rises in the leader's voice. The Empire doesn't care if a few farmers lose some sprouts, but drop a corpse on the royal road and the place will be filled with soldiers before we even spend the coin. We don't need that trouble. Now quiet, here they come. You soon spot a, a group of farmers coming around the corner, bringing their fares, wares to the market. So yeah, the cards represent the enemies and the uh, characters that are uh, involved in this. So the three of toil are three uh, peasants, basically. Those are really low strength uh, minions, basically. And uh, right is the leader. So there's a leader of a, of the troop with four of greed, which are four thieves, the basic type. The thieves uh, fell the tree into the path of the unsuspecting farmers and leave out weapons brandished. Give us all your food! Alright, we can. Uh, have, we have three options here. Leap to the farmer's defense, offer to help the farmers one in them. It won't come for free, or help the thieves with their extortion. Um, this is basically, uh, well, you have like three options here, each work uh, in different ways. I mean, more risk probably. The, the, the lower we pick here, uh, the more skulls we're gonna get in the um, gambit if we choose to. We could offer the farm's help and there's probably a good chance we'll get a gambit card where we have uh, we have uh, we have a gambit with cards I think in this case. Where we'll um, 
where if we get a, a sword, we'll get some money. If not, we'll probably get nothing. So this is high risk, uh, high reward. But uh, I'm just going to be the generally, I'm generally going to be lawful good here. So we'll uh, leap to the farmer's defense and just uh, yeah, let's help these guys out, right? You draw your weapon with a practice skill. Well, you hear the leader's voice. You lads handle this. I'll meet you when you're done. Okay, there we go. Then we enter combat. Um, I won't skip this yet, but once uh, at some point I'll just start skipping these scenes to as far well, as far as I can. I don't know if I can. You'll get shown the uh, dudes when they first appear, or weapons when they first appear. A thug. Violence for the sake of violence and theft for the sake of money. Thieves attack frequently and can evade the standard attacks, making heavy weapons less effective. Yeah, there's different weapon types. We'll get to that in some point. Anyway, let's get going. We we we. This is uh, the, the the stuff. I know all this. All of this. So I'll just uh, move through. Struggle. Defend or struggle. Right. Anyway, I'm just gonna get in here. I have um, I have color blind mode on, so I get yellow instead of green. Anyway, hitting right yeah, activates this ability. So let's see if we can do this without getting hit, and we did just fine. These are relatively easy. I'll try not to talk too much while uh, <laughs> playing these battles, because of and uh, for now I'll 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 I'll, I'll uh, narrate everything, but won't that won't last because it takes a long time. Anyway, the farmers fumble in their haver sacks. Uh, the fam farmers fumble in their haver sacks in gratitude. Thank you, adventurer. I'm sure that after they took our food, they would have taken a less as well. So we get a food gain card. Food is used to... oh, two even. Nice. Alright, two food gain cards that is used to traverse the map. Uh, if you already explored a tile, it won't consume food. That's also new compared to one and a huge improvement. I like that a lot. You also heal five per, per step. So, yeah. We don't need that now, we are fully healed. Anyway, you fall on the food with a sigh, shoveling bread in, in your mouth to quell your hunger. I don't think we were hungry, but sure. Your satisfaction lasts only a moment before you realize your father's amulet is not among the takings. So we lost our amulet. The leader must still have it. So you set on your feet, determined to find him. All right. So, well, now we have uh, the map thing here. We can basically only move forward here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the leader of the thieves to, re to, re to retrieve our amulets. So let's see what's down uh, here. A friend of need. While enjoying a moment besides the fire, you spy a strange figure approaching your camp. It's a goblin dressed in what must pass for goblin finery. From beneath the f a filthy fox pelt serving as an ill-fitting wig, the goblin winks at you with wild red eyes. Aha! I've been roaming for hours trying to find you. We must get this over with quickly if I have any hope of getting to all the people on my list before sunrise. It lowers a sack from its, its shoulders now. From within my sack, I can conjure whatever your heart desire desires. The goblin voice trills off as he examines his sack. Well, I could. If there wasn't a blooming great big hole in it, his hat disappears entirely into the pack until his bulbous, bulbous, bulbous nose protrudes from the breach. A new plan then, the goblin. A new plan then. The goblin pulls out his last trinkets. So we have three options here. Um, here the weapon styles come into play. Axe is basically strong, good against armor, but relatively slow. It's not very good for blocking northerners, for example, uh, who attack relatively quickly with heavy attacks. And th thieves, as you can see, the thugs evade. But yeah, we'll, if there's a new card, we inspect it. So this does extra damage about, uh, right against corrupted. While well, Bash does more damage against Corrupted, it's also heavy. This is a one-handed, one-handed sword. R repost does more damage to uh, Northerners. The one-handed weapon is the uh, well, the, the star thing at top here shows the special attack if you had right, but uh, right bumper. And we have a shield. Uh, I'm tempted to always go for the Warriors X because more damage is uh, quicker fights, which is is very nice, and uh, it suits our needs just fine. So we'll, we'll grab the weapon here. We have a neglected sword, so <laughs> it's gonna up our damage by uh, well, a significant amount. It's a slower weapon, of course. But yeah, that's fine. I think we'll fight two small students, so this actually might be somewhat of a mistake. But there's another uh, weapon type we'll get later, which is the light weapons. Those are 
ones. Those are supposed to be for uh, thieves, but I generally find the X still better against thieves, so yeah. Anyway, uh, a wise choice. Now I must go. There are many others I must visit before I can rest. The goblin runs off into the night, his fox wig flapping in the evening breeze. So now we can uh, change equipment in the inventory, uh, which looks like this. First one is weapons, second one is shields, uh, third one is... Is that, is that gloves? Whoa, I have an enormous blank, like a mind blank right now. Huh, I don't know, <laughs> it should be. Uh, we have a adventurous garb and a uh, headpiece. So chest, head, and we have rings which we can have infinite of, so <laughs> like uh, like the standard uh, role-playing things where you can have two rings, like one on each ring finger I suppose, you can have as many rings as you can, so you can have some real bling bling going on here. And the last one is uh, blessings and curses. Yeah, that's weird. I kind of remember what the hand does. That's weird. <laughs> it's it's very obvious, probably. I'll, I'll get to it when I uh, when I remember what it was again. Anyway, um, yeah, we don't need to change anything. We'll uh, we'll use the yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just use the X. Anyway, we'll move to the next one. There we go. Finding forest folk. This card has a token. Can you find it? Well, there you go. That's a token uh, token uh, card. Basically, if it has like one of these things in the in the bottom there, it. Uh, you have to beat the encounter often in a certain way to unlock it, and that unlocks more cards and equipment. So we'll be prioritizing that, of course, as I said, because we want to unlock as many stuff, many things as we can, because there's some really strong, st strong things in here. Anyway, your, your journey through the forest is interrupted by an inquisitive child. Are you searching for the forest folk? My uncle says that they used to walk these woods giving out gifts. I want to find one and ask for a lemon cake. As, as they dash, dash off to peer under a nearby log, the child shouts back, Remember, if you meet the forest folk, you'll get me a lemon cake. In the other direction, an eerie song hangs in the air. You attempt to find its origin. So, let's go. Well, top one... I think that it's that one over there, but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. It's a success. Maybe I wasn't, it wasn't the right one, but it wasn't the skill. Uh, you follow the song through the thicket and stream until you find an open glade bathed in golden sunlight. You find an aged maiden, her posture bent like the boss, 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 box, box, I don't know how you pronounce that, of a forest. It has been twelve winters since I had a visitor. Her voice is a whisper, yet it thunders in your ears. You may visit me when you are need adventurer. That unlocks this a token. Is yours now. Even if you lose the challenge, you have earned this token. Yep, so if you die, if you lose, you still get a token, so it's always worth it. Anyway, let's move. Nothing could be more fitting now than meeting the mage who started this all. Or at least, started it all for you. A trail of fallen trees and distraught farmers leads you to the thieves who has stolen your amulet. It seems their infighting has only gotten worse. The bandits surround the former leader's leader weapon drawn. So, yeah. There we have the leader. Everyone will get their fair share. There's no need for violence, the leader implores. Who ever heard of a thief talk about fair shares, spit one. You're, you turn up and bust us around. We've barely stabbed anyone. It's been days since I've stabbed someone. Days! The leader notices you approaching and waves you over. As much as I'd love to continue this discussion regarding stabbings, I'm afraid I have urgent business which my associate with my associate here. As he greets you, he whispers, "Keep me alive, and there will be plenty of gold for your pro for your trouble." So we have some options here. Tell him gold cannot replace the amulet he stole, or tell him he will pay for blood for his thievery. Well, once again, we're gonna be uh, we the good guys as well as we can. That's our role, so we'll uh, tell him the gold cannot replace the amulet stall. Let's not get violent here, shall we? He holds up a finger. First rule of negotiation, never let them know what you want. Kill my associates and I will glad re return your amulet. Every reliable, the thieves draw their blades to mock you. The leader here is a way to hide. So yeah. Um, give us all your stuff or we'll stab you up, cross one of them. You consider your options. Fight or give them all your food and gold. Well, obviously we're gonna do it now. That's, uh, that's a really bad idea. This has no token either. Sometimes if you have <laughs> a ridiculous demand like this and it has a token, chances are you need to actually give them all your food and gold to unlock it. Anyway, but we're gonna fight. 
You draw your weapon and prepare to deal with the miscreants. Well, you can see here that you get tips every time you have a wrong weapon equipped or wrong something else, like well, basically wrong weapons. Basically, is the main thing you get uh, tips for here. And you can change them like right before the fight. Like if we do this, that's fine. That works, but we're not. We're gonna use the warrior's axe because it does more damage. So yeah, you can change that, and you should change it. There's even some things where I highly recommend changing this. Um, we'll get to that uh, when we get there. So anyway, let's go. Let's fight these guys. I think we'll get probably get a sh sh the last card here. If it goes in like really slowly, it doesn't. Then uh, we get a show of what uh, of a new weapon or something. But that didn't happen now. Anyway. We also do double attacks now, if you use an axe, so you still miss, miss there, not a miss there. A new ability here, if you see the right one, there's a small little icon below my weapon uh, thing there, which uh, every time you defend it gets a charge. Like here, I got it, it's, it's, it's yellow now, if I hit B, then I stun. In this case, it's a stun. There's some other things you can get bleeds and confuses too. I also get hit once. Oops. <laughs> That's what you get for talking while fighting, but. <laughs> with, the ba with the battle resolve, uh, resolve, the thief leader nods in approval at, you, at the carnage before him. He holds out a hand. The name is uh, Malaclips, Bard extra Extraordinaire. His small fates under the, your withering glare. Sensor <laughs> that actually rhymed. <laughs> oh well. Sensing your anger, he raises his hand in surrender. Wait, let's not be hasty. Is that on purpose? That almost rhymed it well as well. Anyway, we're on the same side here. I'm an upstanding citizen, just like you. I've been working with the thieves, yes, but only for the greater good. No, really, they were killing people before I came along. I know it seems bad, but look. He pulls out an amulet from his pockets and presses it into your hands. All is forgiven, yes? You stare at the amulet. It does not look familiar. <laughs> oh! Malakalips. Malak Malaklips. That's more difficult reading out loud than reading. Anyway. Malaklips says, scratching his head. He opens a small satchel. So, which one is yours? So now we have a little option. It's purely cosmetic. I don't think it does anything. You might get ref it might get referenced once. I generally play. Um, let's do something I don't generally take. Let's take the crow. That's, that's a new one. That's for the let's play, right? I think I used it li line in the in the in the bull for my other two save files. The eagle amulet that suits you. Very similar facial structure. Say, you know what? I'm lonely. You're lonely. We should work together. Oh, that that could have gone a uh, whole whole different way there. <laughs> anyway, you have befriended uh, Malaclips the trickster. We should probably get to know uh, one another, seeing as we're going to be friends for life. Malaclips says, "Tell me, where are you from?" So now we get some more uh, customization options. Um, where you're from is basically. What you're gonna look like, so now we'll, uh, we'll get like the standard face number one here. Hello, or maybe not, maybe this is random, <laughs> could be. Um, let's take a nice, I like the white one here with, with pink, it's great. Let's see, doesn't really matter, does it? Let's take one that looks most like me. I'm just kidding, let's take the, the, the real one here. Or the urban one that is. Um, we already saw my other guy also has this little little knot down to the side, but we'll be like, nice and bold. No, I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll take this thing. Wait, I can. Oh yeah, that's where you go. I'll take the. Can we take the black one? Uh, let's take the black hair one. So yeah, let's. We'll look like really generic, generic here. Nice. Okay, finish. As you can see the uh, the brooch. Which holds my cape together is the amulet, which is just that's a nice uh, raven thing here. We could change that too. From Clearwater, eh? You don't say. Good swords from Clearwater. Clearwater, very trusting. Oh, by the way, I mean, we, friend, owe money to Vignus of the Thieves Guild. He's quite angry at us. <laughs> we should journey to my bridge together to appease him. Some gold might help. So, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a draw. <laughs> 
we're in a relationship and uh, puts and this this Malaclips pushes like all his depths on us. Very nice. Anyway, let's move on. Although, come to think of it, I'm rather busy. Malaclips eyes a pret a pit a pretty trader, pretty. Huh. Pretty trader hiking up the road. So, it'd be best if you get the gold and I meet you there. Oh, thanks. Very, very much appreciated. Anyway, next mission, next map. So this is the new level with new cards. Uh, I'm going to try to explore everything unless there is a good reason not to. Uh, there's a few missions come to mind which you want to finish as soon <laughs> as humanly possible. Smaller pieces of our fates shattered into fragments. Collect enough and your reward will come in time. You enter a competition of strength at a fair. A gold prize is available to the winner. Um, so yeah, in the first round of the competition, your opponent is the diminutive Roland, a halfling from a traveling troop of acrobats. Acrobats. Um, as you can see th at the bottom here is, is not a real full token, it's a shard. If you collect five of these shards, uh, they can be from, uh, from any card or equipment, you get uh, more customization options, which you can change in the campfire, like we just uh, did, wi which we did just, just now. So these are the cards we're gonna not use as often, unless they're really good op or contribute to the um, to the uh, what, what shall we call it the uh, the current mis mission we're doing. Anyway, this is a new gambit. This is a dice gambit. We get uh, we get the roll These dice three dice. Are another small game embedded in our game. So yeah, we will roll them. You can re-roll one of them. Oh uh, no, as many as you can. Uh, if we re-roll this, we need the four or higher. I'm gonna take all three. It makes no sense to. Uh, basically, anything under a four, it's 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 twice to re-roll. You are learning. So yeah, we got a twelve. Thank you. Roland is no match for your strength. He gives a disappointed backflip off the table and collects this meager winnings. Then cart wheels out of the door. <laughs> the mental images is great of it. Great here. Anyway, you get 10 gold here. Thanks. Double the, double the gold. You take your reward from the purser on the way out to the tavern. When you return, you will compete in the next round for a larger prize. So as you can, as you notice, we didn't get the shard. In order to get the shard, I think you need to win this five times. And you, it gets harder every time. So this time we had to be the 10, then you have to be the 12, 14, 16, and I think then you get it. I haven't actually gotten this in my main, uh, well, my new new save, so it's very, very fortunate. Uh, let's head over here. Water, Water is a symbol for the many thoughts that churn beneath the surface. What is it you're thinking of? What concern is worrying at your mind? Let it fall into the waters beneath. All right. While crossing a stone bridge, you suddenly find yourself confronted by a villainous band. A four of blight. So that's a new type of enemy. That's going to that's corrupted. Um, l the weapon we're using now is actually very good against these, so we're definitely going to fight them. Anyway, you could stand a fight of fiends, or you or throw yourself to the mercy of the river below. So we can leap into the river, which when we are, and then we have to throw dice, which is actually the only time I've ever seen this that you get a dice that you, that you that you get told what kind of gamut it is and what the target is. Generally, you just have to pick and hope it's not like something completely crazy. But yeah, uh, we of course are gonna go, gonna stand and fight because leaping in the river doesn't give us loot, does it? So we're gonna stand and fight. You ready, your weapon? So this uh, four blight will get in slow because uh, it's the first time we encounter blight. 3 to 1, there it is. So we get a close up on these uh, creatures and uh, we get uh, told what the hell they do. Inflicted. Yeah, that's a type of corrupted, I suppose. I don't remember these names. Anyway, the first touches of corrupted corruption bring forth the darkest elements of their victims. Infected enemies are feeble, causing them to become knocked down when their health is low. Use a finisher beco before they recover. So now we have uh, we have to do finishers, which is the uh, light trick or light bu left bu left bumper. I don't know. We'll see. I remember when I fight. And these things do regular attacks, so. Yeah, it's left tri it's left trigger. So you just hit left trigger, you kill it, and then we have a weapon ability we're gonna use, which kills that one, and which kills this. This cures. Normally you don't can get hit while doing uh, finishers, but this guy did get a hit in. That's generally fuse abilities, artifacts, uh, executions, 
they don't uh, they all and uh, all attacks on you are, are uh, negated but sometimes the timing is a bit off and you get uh, you get hurt anyway having spilled your enemy's blood you search the bodies for anything useful so we get an equipment card which <laughs> is a shield a simple defense you can do better given time and we heal up for 25 so yeah that a uh, bit of an overheal there but yeah we get a shield which I think it's yeah it's slightly better than this one this thing is rusted, rusty, so you cannot uh, sell it. You will always have this. This thing is reflects. All right. Anyway, well, I move back, and as you can see it doesn't uh, take up food, which is very nice. And we're going to take this uh, this card here. The roads have become even more deadly since the Empire has come to power, despite their promises of the opposite. The road ahead is blocked by an overturned carriage and a woman calling for help. Please help, she cries. I've been robbed by a band of thugs. Is there anything you can do? So yeah, we're going to assist the dis distressed woman. And <laughs> just as I said by the previous card, I've never seen a dice target. Here we have a dice target. Anyway, we're going to assist here. If we don't, I uh, think we get attacked. But yeah, this is... Uh, I, I want to save this roll for later, please. <laughs> if only we could. Thank you, the woman says, as you help her from her from the carriage. Please accept this token of my this as a token of my gratitude. We get some gold, which is just what we need, and some food, which we don't really need. You thank the woman and continue on your way. There we go. Next card. Celebrations in aid of what? You see how quickly the actions of the usurper are turned into tales for children. Nearing the sleepy hamlet of Dulwich, you find the villages in the midst of some kind of celebration. Much of the activity concerns a large paper and wood statue depicting the f a fearsome warrior looming triumphantly over a prone lizardman. So generally what you want to do is do the ask things, which gives you some more information and generally does not end the card. If you do follow occurring your way, you end the card. Ask a local is generally alright, so we're going to do that. A friendly stable hand explains. In a bygone age, our town was beset by half men, half lizards. There was no food, no respite, and very little hope. Lizard men were actually a thing in uh, Hand of Fate 1, so uh, they aren't in this game as far as I know, but uh, they were a pain. <laughs> they were a real pain. Anyway. Salvation came in the form of a nameless warrior who hunted a beast for little more than a handful of coins and a crust of bread. Which is, once again, very like. Uh, like we were in the first game. He smiles warmly at the festivities. We honor the warrior like this. The statue is filled with food and gold and we take turns smashing it to bits with a club. You're welcome to join us and you may keep whatever falls out. So yeah, this is free money and food. I like that. Um, the parade and statue are winding their way into the town and almost out of sight. So yeah, we'll just follow the parade and uh, yeah, the parade ends in the town square. You watch as the villagers take take turns smashing the statue with a club and gathering the food and gold that spills out. A local notices your interest and asks if you would like a turn. So yeah, we're gonna join in. So there's a huge success card here, which uh, probably helps us a lot, and I think it's on top. There you go. You bring the club down with a thunderous crack that silences the crowd. As the statue splits open, they erupt in a boisterous roar. Coins and sweets flow freely from the huge cavity you created. You survey the spoils and try to scoop them up before anyone else can. So this... Uh, <laughs> okay, we have another gambit here. So 10 gold is the biggest one. I think that's that one. No, it's 5 food. That's also good. Well, it's okay. You scramble to gather the bounty that you unleashed. Would you like to go, uh, try to gather more? Yeah, sure. You survey the spoils and try to scoop them up before anyone else can so now we have a fill your car I think if we hit that it, we were pretty much done I think it's this one here no it's still not the gold we'll get there yeah we're gonna try this I'm gonna read this because it's the same so it was on top I think it went back here oh we missed went to the right that's that was actually my Oh. Before you can gather anything, a, a young child shovels the bounty into a basket and scampers off. With your turnover, you leave. So we got like eight food out of this. That's it's fine, it's not gold, but. Here we come to the end of the beginning. Running errands for mavis. As you can this see. Will become oh, a theme, sorry. I dare say. As you can see to the right here, 
you uh, the, the 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 thing the, the the golden token started to float. So uh, yeah, that basically means that uh <laughs> that basically means that uh, it's it's the end. It, he, already s he also said it, but yeah. You arrive at Maya Bridge as the sun begins to dip below the horizon. You find Malaclips perusing a selection of cheeses by the market. Ah! If it isn't my good friend the adventurer! Did you bring the gold? Vignes has arranged to meet at the graveyard. Yeah, we'll go to the graveyard. You wonder whether the spot was chosen for its seclusion or for easy body disposal. Vignes greets Malaclips with a sly grin. Looks like you turn up after all, and with a lackey in tow. We had our doubts, you know. So, a Guidonicist. That's a different type of uh, thief. Well, we'll get there. Vignes cracks his knuckles and giggles. <laughs> well now, Malaclips, convince me. What's to stop me cutting off your head today? You reveal your gold as Malaclips scrounges in his pocket for some too. The heavy satchel of riches lands at the Vignus' feet with a thud that echoes through the silence of the cemetery. Cemetery. The fun part is this: this doesn't. This is a tutorial, so any gold you have will have this exact effect. I think I do done this with like two or three gold once. <laughs> it still gave it big thuds, which I found hilarious. Anyway, you lose the thirty-five gold. That's our deal done, Malaclip says, very obvious in his voice. No need for any further troubles. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mal. Fitness grins. Fitness grins. You should have known that guilt was never going to let you pay which cash stolen from our members in the first place. Excuse me, I thought there was a carnival thing going on, and the other one was from uh, doing some, some, some. What's that thing? Test of strength thing. Anyway. I'm gonna fight the Greed Anarchist, which is somewhat of the boss. If you kill the boss, the fight ends, so... We could do that, it's... the, the Greed Anarchist obviously isn't that great. And once you've beaten a boss, they will uh, turn up in normal combats as well. On the average, there's some change, there's some difference. Anyway, Vignus the Crazed, treacherous and greedy, a dangerous combination. Anarchists throw flaming bombs that cause fire damage, your armor is no use to you here. So yeah, we're gonna kill the small dudes first, and you have to dodge out of these, they're yellow, so you cannot dodge. We're gonna, of course, defend when we can. And yeah, we'll just keep out of that, that circle. If you get this guy in melee, you'll breathe fire, which, of course, is something we don't really want to deal with either. We'll stun that one. Oh, that missed. Oh, oops. I thought I stunned him. There you go, he does the fire thing if you get too close. Ooh, that's nasty. Because if he does the throw attack when you're right on top of him, you can impossibly dodge it. And this will make me immune, so that's why I did the, uh, didn't the dodge but use the attack. This should do it. You always have to end the fights with bosses with this execution, so. See ya. <laughs> Execution was a little bit off-center, but we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it. Malakip scratches his chin, thoughtfully. It seems you could do with someone savvy to help you navigate these tricky matters of diplomacy. Like, maybe killing everyone wasn't the best idea. <laughs> Come, let us discuss our, discuss our partnership over an ill or two. I wonder if you got a different result if you only killed him. Huh. I don't know. There we go. Then well we can done. You have cleared the first challenge, and now we can move on to the next. So yeah, for completing the four, we get the Cardinal Blade and the Bastion of Purification. We also get the following encounters: Market Thief, Dark Spice, Exotic Lies, Fork on the Road, and Arm Wrestling, which we—that's oh, that's the word I was looking for earlier. Arm Wrestling. For befriending Malaclips, we get Malaclips Problem and Malaclips. Uh, I mean the Trickster. Yep. And this is a DLC thing. For uh, your allegiance to the dealer's table you receive. Uh, I think this is a new amulet. These are new colors, and these are new head styles. You also get a similar thing if you get shards. So, 
And for completing, for finding the forest folk, we get the old maiden. Welcome to my challenges. Together, we will traverse 22 paths of wisdom and despair in the hope of awakening. All right, so that's the first mission done. Uh, I've, done I've done a lot of elaboration. I will, not, of course, not do this every time. Um, for now, this is going to be a little bit of a test just to see if, if people like to see more of this game. Um, the first three missions are pretty much tutorials, so we'll try it. We'll, we'll work through these uh, now. And I see that I'm playing just one, and this is only two floors in one episode, might be a bit long. So I'll try to uh, aim at between 30 and 45 minutes if I can. S see if I can uh, can I manage to do that. So let me know if uh, let me know in the comments if you if you like to see more of this. And um, I I enjoy this a lot. I, I strongly recommend this. It's 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 very fun. For now, though, um, that's me off. That's me out. Thanks for uh, watching and listening, and I uh, hope to see you in the in the next episode. Um, I'll probably try to upload uh, for now like one or two per week of this, since it does take quite a bit of time, <laughs> especially if we get to editing, because there's going to be a lot of failing. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.